That's that's the hot job. And each team I work with has about ten of those people. You look at everything from parking to concessions to merchandise. You look at it all and you figure out what the best thing is, how to price it, how to sell it, how to distribute it. It's just it's really a cool job. So we, we actually have a conference every year at uh, USF. And I send my students to the one at MIT, it's pretty expensive, so I decided to do one at USF so people that can't afford to go to MIT can go to our conference and one of our But that's a hot job area. Sales is always hot. And the agencies are, there's a lot of agencies, so it's a good, it's a good place to be. Can you kind of lay out like a college map on classes that you Yeah, yeah. Um, my recommendation would be to go, if you want to major in sport management, try and go to a school where the sport management program is in the business school. Because that way, if you get through it, you tell me that all the time, right? Because if you go through it, and all of a sudden you change your mind, you got a business degree. You can do other things. So it gives you the flexibility. But if you go somewhere else and you don't get, a, don't get the business degree, you're kind, of, you're kind of stuck. And you're going to be working in an enterprise, or you're going to be selling insurance. If you can't tell, I don't have to be yes. I just, I just talk straight. So UMass has a really good program where Lee went. South Carolina has a program that's not in the business school, but it's a really good program. We actually have a student who's not here today. He's up visiting there this weekend. Yeah, it's a good program. I know that. I think it's 22 faculty. It's, it's 1,200 students. It's huge. So that's kind of an issue I have. You know, once you get a job, Robert Morris has a good one in the business school in Pittsburgh. Um, Baylor has a good program. Those are all ones that are in business school. So check that out. That's what I would tell you to do. And that way you're taking the business course, you're taking your general electives, mm -hmm. then you're taking your basic business courses, then you take your application courses. So you take marketing, then you take sport marketing. You take finance, then you take sport finance. So it's a good way to go. Or else just go do an uh, undergraduate business degree and you go to grad school. But go to grad school and then have like a work program. So you can do but internships are good. You gotta go show people what you can do. You can talk about it all you want, but you gotta show people what you can do. Yeah. Uh, how'd you get your foot in the door with like major MBA team, like when you first started your consulting company? Okay, so you gotta hear the start story. <laughs> it was a good story. So my students have done a couple projects for the NBA while I was mass. And uh, you know we wrote reports and the reports went his off. I never met. So one day the phone rings while I'm at UMass. And there's a woman on the phone. She goes, Will you hold for David Stern? And my first thought is, Yeah, okay. So I go, Yeah, right. It was Fleischman. <laughs> I thought it was somebody who's jerking my check. I go, Yeah, right. He's on the phone. He goes, Yeah, right. That's how you answer the phone. What the hell's the matter with you? And I go, uh, Hey, I didn't think it was you. I didn't think it was you. I just, you know, I have people all the time just call up and pull pranks. He goes, well, do you know it's me now? I go, yeah. <laughs> so we start talking. He was actually calling and asking questions about the report. And then he saw that I was a reference for somebody who's thinking about for the job. So then we end up the conversation. He says to me, hey, if there's ever anything I can do for you, let me know. I said, great. Then I ran down the hall and told everybody at UMass. So they started just calling me. They all go, yeah, right. So about a month later, I'm on a plane with my laptop, and I said, you know, I get this sabbatical coming up from UMass. I was thinking I was going to go teach in Italy, but that fell through. So I said, all right, I'll write Dave Stern a letter. So I write Dave Stern a letter, said, I, I have a sabbatical coming up, I'd like to work for you. And then, for some God unknown reason, I said, by the way, here's the five things I think are wrong with the NBA. I like to come there and help you fix it. And then I put the stamp on that bad boy and sent it off because there was no email at that point in time. So, you know, you end a letter with, don't say hope to hear from you soon, because that's like writing a letter to Santa Claus and asking for a red button. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent this letter off. I said, listen, I know the playoffs are coming up in the draft, so if I don't hear from you by the middle of July, I'll call you. So I'm at uh, doing some work at the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. July the 12th, I'm out in Denver. I call my wife at night. 
but by the way, one of my most outstanding things I've ever accomplished in my life is I've been married for almost 46 years. And my wife, I so outkick my coverage. <laughs> I, I am so massively over chick, but you know, it just worked out. So I call my wife and she goes, hey, guess who called for you today? I go, who? She goes, David Stern. I go, really? I said, what do you want? She goes, it was crazy. He said, he asked me if I thought you were funny. I said, what do you call this? I told him, I thought you were real funny, that's why I married you. He said, he thought you were real funny too. And he would like you to come to New York and talk to him. I said, all right. So I go to his office the next week. And I'm sitting in the office. Thank God I'm sitting back because he's about this big. And so he walks in and he says, hello, professor. Just like that. I go, well, let me you start. He goes, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. He goes, what's my job? I know he doesn't want me to say commissioner of the NBA. I know that's not the answer. But I said, I have to think for about 15 to 20 seconds. I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. So I said, well, obviously you're commissioner of the NBA. He looks at me and goes, obviously. <laughs> and he said, you don't know. And I just said, well, why don't you tell me? He goes, all right. I'm an investment banker with 30 clients, and my job is to increase the value of their investments. Do you understand that, professor? And I said, yeah, I got it. Then we had a nice conversation, and he says, all right, let's do this. He goes, how long do you want to do this? And I said, a semester. He goes, no, a year. I go, okay. He goes, when do you want to start? And I said, this was July. I said, how about the day after Labor Day? He goes, how about a week from Monday? And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, how much do you want, which I never anticipated. I go, why don't you tell me? He said, I'll give you $2,500 a month in an apartment. Well, I'll still get paid from you, man. So $2,500 a month in an apartment in New York gave me a $2,000 a month budget, which got me an apartment about this big, <laughs> <laughs> all one room, everything there. But, it was, but I could walk to work. So I did that. And then after the year, uh, I had to go back to UMass, so I worked part-time. And the year after that, he hired me as vice president of team marketing. Because I did a bunch of projects that first year, and he really liked it. And we really go along well. So that's kind of how it happened. So the moral of the story is don't be afraid to send a letter, make a phone call, or mail a letter. Just, you know, and, you know when I sent it, I thought, what, more than 100? But I sent it. I still have no idea why I wrote the five things. I thought it was wrong. <laughs> but that was intentional. When they're in school, is there certain classes they should take that they probably haven't thought about yet? Just because I, I would take a, a database marketing class or a business intelligence class for sure. Learn how to learn how to use data to make decisions. Um, typical marketing, typical finance. Um, if there's any courses on digital marketing or social media or design. I would take those. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to look at what you're good at and add to that, but you also want to look at what you're not good at or what you're weak at, what you don't know about. And take a couple of those courses just to expose you to it so you can, you know, understand. They're, they're usually the youngest person at their internships. So sure. they're 17, 18 years old. Yeah. You've seen the college graduate interns. What, what, should they not do? I mean, they're learning not what to do, yeah. but like, how do you do? How do you make sure you don't do things that are going to get you on the wrong side of your internship? Do whatever they gave you to the best of all. Just crush it. Whatever they give you, no matter what it is. If you're making copies, make the best copies they've ever seen. But whatever it is, do it the best you can, and then ask for more. When you've done what they said to do, you fulfilled that obligation, then you can ask for something else. Or you can suggest things. Hey, you know what? I really know about this or I know about this. Well, thank you, man. Yeah, they just making me thirsty this morning. Uh, you know, you might see some things that just need done, or you see that. Or, you know, I say to my boss, hey, listen, I know you got a lot on your plate. What's something you might feel comfortable getting off your plate? Let me take a stab at it. And 
initiatives. What, you know, when I'm looking to hire somebody, the three things I look for are passion, enthusiasm, and coachability. Okay, if I can coach you, I can teach you what you need to know. You don't have to know what you think I need to know, but I damn sure need to know if you're coachable or not. Because in this business, you're going to spend 50, and I work weeks 50 to 60 hours a week. And I, I got to like you. I got to want to spend time with you. <laughs> if you're an asshole, I don't want anything to do with you. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to be a nice, you got to be a nice person that's agreeable, you know, and gets along with everybody else. That's, I, I can't ever, you know, I, we call it chemistry or we call it fit. But that's really important. But, you know, there can be other people there. You know, internship's an opportunity. Some people are checking a box when they do an internship. You know, like I tell people all the time, somebody's saying, hey, I'm going to do an internship uh, for the Dallas Mavericks. I say, great, what are you going to do? Um, well, whatever they have for me. I say, what are you going to do? Um, I start in May and I finish in August. And I just look at him like that. Start in May and you end in August. And you're in an NBA team. I said, what the hell are you going to do? What do you mean? I said, they're not playing. <laughs> There's no games. There's no events. They're all on vacation. What the hell are you going to learn? Well, you know, it fits my schedule. Oh, it does. Well, fitting your schedule is not as important as fitting my schedule. So I tell I, you know, when I taught undergrads, I used to tell them, I said, bust up on some courses, get some extra time, and go do an internship for a year. Because in a year, somebody's going to quit. Somebody's going to get fired, somebody's going to leave, and there's going to be an opportunity. And you're there. You know, you're, and you bust your ass. You don't do it because it's convenient for you. That's how you end up working at Walmart. Yeah? I was going to say, uh, as far as like school, did you get your bachelor's and your master's like all no. at one time, or did you like... Exactly. I did my bachelor's, got 72, I didn't go back to grad school until 78. In those days, the reason I went back was, whenever you apply for a job in those days, they look at your resume, and they'd say, oh, you majored in this, you can't have this job. And I heard that, I had said, man, I had to go back to grad school. Not like I was a great student. My first semester in college, I had a 1-2, and my second semester in college, I had a 1-8. The only reason I had a 1-8 is because I needed a 1-6 to stay. <laughs> I went to Catholic school growing up, I wore a coat and tie every day, at an all-boys school. So I went to Stillwater, Oklahoma, and I found there was girls in class. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody would sell me beer even though I was 17 years old. It's a bad combination. <laughs> yeah, like I flunked freshman English, because I didn't go. <laughs> somebody, somebody told me, this is how stupid I was. Yeah, if you don't go three times in a row, they drop you from the roll. Okay, I'm gonna go three times throughout the seventh or eighth morning. I get my transcript F. Then next semester, you look at my transcript. I took an advanced placement exam and I passed that English course and the next two. So, I mean, it wasn't like I was stupid. I just didn't know. <laughs> also got a D in art appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the difference between Manet and Monet, and I still don't care. <laughs> Nobody has ever asked me to tell them, explain the difference between man and Monet. Hey, I like lily pads, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> How far in advance do you have your students looking for internships? Understanding, like, I, they, they're out at theirs, and the thing is, people think, oh, I can go get them, but how far in advance are they? See, they don't do an internship because my kids are in that residency program the whole way. Right. It's okay. I said, yeah, no, you're good. Um, so they come in the first day, and during orientation, I say, okay, this is the first day of job hunting. So we put you in a work situation the first year, and the whole goal of the first year is you're working a part-time job with the idea that you're going to figure out what you want to do in our residency program, which is the second year. So, you know, you know you can work with the Lightning, but what do you want to do with the Lightning? Do you want to do sales? Do you want to do social media? Do you want to do events? Do you want to do marketing? Do you want to do uh, partnership activation? We hope that first year you figure that out. And then we we'll put you in that situation. Or you go in, you, you say, okay, I want to interview for these particular residencies. And we set you up. Everybody gets a residency. But you're competing against the people in class, so you might not get the one you want. You might get 
you know, which are best suited for it. And so, like, I, I get this kid coming to see me tomorrow, and he's from Czechoslovakia. And so, he called me up two and a half years ago. He'd just been a, a, accepted at UCF, where I used to be. And he goes, hey, I heard about you, you're at USF, do I come out and talk to you? I said, sure. So he comes down, this dude is like the energizer bunny. I have never seen energy like this. I mean, this kid is like off the chain, you know? I mean, he wears you out just watching. <laughs> and so we started talking, and I really like him, really like him. So I said, I'll tell you what, forget about going to UCF, come here, I'll pay your tuition the first year, because I knew this kid was gonna be a star. And so he goes, and so the first year, He's from international students, he's not allowed to work off campus. So he's working all these little things on campus for the athletic departments and so on. So then he wants to learn how to sell, so we put him at the lightning. And he walks in and talks to his boss, and he says to his boss, I can sell a $50,000 event night to my friends in Czechoslovakia. And his boss says to him, no, it's a waste of time, it's never gonna happen. He goes, but I can do it, I can do it. And he kept saying, no, go make your phone calls, do your thing. Did you read my, I wrote an SPJ column about horses, saying salespeople are horses. Yeah, I think I remember, yeah. It was about this kid. Oh, that's, okay. And so, so this is it. And, uh, and so he calls me up and he's real upset. He says, can I talk to the chair? So he comes to the office, he goes, I can do this. And he's not gonna let me do this because he wants me to do these things. And I'm thinking to myself, nobody would turn down 50 grand. I said, well, what time, when you wake up in the morning, what time is it in Czech Republic? He goes, if I get up at seven, it's two o'clock, it's, it's three o'clock. I said, fine, get up at seven o'clock, do it from your house, do it on your cell phone, and do your sale, and then go in and do what you're supposed to do. So he goes, and he does it, and he closes the sale, the sale's $60,000. They fly over, they buy two suites for a night, and they bring all these people, and they were wanting to see Yarmir Yager, and he wasn't playing, but that was the game anyway. But he sold it. And he gives it to his boss, and his boss goes, you were lucky. He goes, don't do that anymore. And then I wrote the column, and I'm saying, salespeople are like horses, and you have to know how to manage your horses. You got a horse that wants to stay in the corral all the time and have you feed. There's another horse that wants to stay in the corral most of the time, have you feed them, but still likes to go wander around the pasture. Then there's a Mustang, and a Mustang don't give a shit about you. It's all about him or her, and they're gonna run wild and do whatever they're gonna do, but they're really high potential. And then there's a veteran horse that knows all the rules and does what he wants to do, but this kid, Jacob, was a Mustang, and so this kid couldn't manage him. I'm saying, you know, in the column, I said, I wrote it, you know, real veiled, I just said, you know, about horses. And I said, but as a manager, you have to understand that you're gonna have these kind of horses and you can't manage them all the same. So he crushed it, and he ends up, and he's, he's not an American citizen, he gets a job offer from the Florida Panthers, one from the Magic, and then he gets another one to go back to the Czech Republic and be the number two man in the hockey organization. So that's what he did. And I mean, this dude is just unbelievable. Yeah. He walks in one day, I have a gift for you. And I said, great. He goes, you'll really like it. I said, okay. So I opened it up, you know what it was for? A force of insane Andrew. Because this kid was, while well, he was in Czechoslovakia, he was like the number two golfer in Czechoslovakia. And he had taught all these guys, and so they were all over the world. He goes, here, you can go whenever you want to go. So, I mean, just, you know, you never know. And that's why I tell people all the time, you never know until you take the chance to get to know somebody. You never know how good they are. You never know what they're all about. You take the time to find out. Do you remember your class? Yeah. We had people that were really talented and people that were there, you know? And I don't waste my time on people that are there. You know, I teach to the A students, and I know that if I do that, the B students, the normal B students will go get an A, and my some of my C students will get a B. 